Hi, and welcome to First Year Microeconomics. In this presentation, we're going to discuss the third reason why people trade comparative advantage. First, a reminder, what is trade? Remember, our definition is that trade is voluntary exchange between two or more people that makes all participants better off. But the question we've been asking is why do people trade? So far we've had two reasons. The first is different endowments or different starting points. The second reason is the fixed cost of tasks. The third reason that we'll start discussing today is comparative advantage. The key to understanding comparative advantage is the concept of opportunity cost that we dealt with in earlier presentations. If you can't remember what an opportunity cost is, have a look at the earlier presentations to remind yourself. The key idea behind comparative advantage that we're going to be discussing in this presentation is that if two people have different opportunity costs, then specialisation and trade can make them both better off. People can gain by specialisation in production and trade if they have different abilities. But it's not just going to be any sort of abilities. It's going to be different relative abilities. Let me explain what we mean. Suppose that we have two individuals. We'll call them Tom and Becky. They can each undertake two productive activities. They can grow potatoes or they can grow tomatoes. They can divide their time between these two activities in any way they like. They could spend all their time growing one crop, or their time growing the other crop, or they could spend their time growing both potatoes and tomatoes. That's their choice. Suppose, however, that they have different abilities. So it takes Tom four hours work to grow the equivalent of one kilogram of potatoes. It takes him eight hours, or twice as long, to grow a kilogram of tomatoes. Becky is faster than Tom. It only takes her two hours to grow a kilogram of potatoes, and it takes Becky six hours to produce a kilogram of tomatoes. Now notice that Becky can grow potatoes and tomatoes faster than Tom. However, it takes her three times as long to produce a kilogram of tomatoes than it does a kilogram of potatoes, whereas it only took Tom twice as long. That's going to be important. Because Becky requires less inputs to produce one kilogram of tomatoes than Tom, she needs less hours of labour, we say that Becky has an absolute advantage in tomato production. Similarly, in our example, Becky needs less time to produce a kilogram of potatoes, so she also has an absolute advantage in potato production. But if Becky has an absolute advantage in both activities, she uses less labour to produce a kilogram of potatoes than Tom, she uses less labour to produce a kilogram of tomatoes than Tom, then why would Becky want to specialise and trade with Tom? What we will see is that this absolute advantage has nothing to do with potential gains from trade. Rather, Gains from trade depend on relative ability, that is, opportunity cost. So, let's ask ourselves, what is the opportunity cost to Tom of producing one kilogram of potatoes? Well, if he produces potatoes, he can't be using that same time to be producing tomatoes. So his opportunity cost of producing one kilogram of potatoes is the tomato production that he gives up during that time. Now remember that it takes Tom four hours to produce one kilogram of potatoes, but it takes Tom eight hours to produce one kilogram of tomatoes. In the four hours that he uses to produce a kilogram of potatoes, he could have produced half a kilogram of tomatoes. So the one half kilogram of tomatoes that Tom foregoes when he produces a kilogram of potatoes is his opportunity cost of that kilogram of potatoes. OK, so his opportunity cost of one kilogram of potatoes is one half a kilogram of tomatoes that he foregoes. 
What about his opportunity cost of tomatoes? Well, again, if he's producing tomatoes, he can't use that same time to be producing potatoes. So his opportunity cost of a kilogram of tomatoes is the potatoes that he foregoes by using the time to produce tomatoes. Remember, it takes Tom eight hours to produce a kilogram of tomatoes. It takes him four hours to produce a kilogram of potatoes. So in the eight hours he takes to produce one kilogram of tomatoes, he could have used that time to produce two kilograms of potatoes. So Tom's opportunity cost of one kilogram of tomatoes is two kilograms of potatoes foregone. Notice that Tom's opportunity cost of potatoes is just the inverse of his opportunity cost of producing tomatoes. This is a general rule. The lower your opportunity cost of potatoes, the higher your opportunity cost of the other good. That makes sense because the opportunity cost is asking what you forego of one good when you produce another good. Now, let's move on to Becky. Remember that she takes two hours to produce one kilogram of potatoes and six hours to produce one kilogram of tomatoes. So if we're thinking of her opportunity cost of potatoes, it takes her two hours. In that two hours, she could have produced one third of a kilogram of tomatoes. So Becky's opportunity cost of one kilogram of potatoes is the one third of a kilogram of tomatoes that she foregoes when she uses her two hours to produce the potatoes. Similarly, if she uses six hours of her time to produce a kilogram of tomatoes, she could have used that time to produce three kilograms of potatoes. So Becky's opportunity cost of one kilogram of tomatoes is the three kilograms of potatoes that she foregoes when she produces that one kilogram of tomatoes. Notice again that Becky's opportunity cost of potatoes, which is one third of a kilogram of tomatoes foregone, is just the inverse of her opportunity cost of tomatoes, which is three kilograms of potatoes foregone, and obviously vice versa. The opportunity costs are inverses of each other. Also, note that while Becky had an absolute advantage in everything, in other words, she used less time to produce one kilogram of potatoes and she used less time to produce one kilogram of tomatoes. Notice that in terms of opportunity cost, Tom actually has the lower opportunity cost of producing a kilogram of tomatoes. He gives up less potatoes when he produces a kilogram of tomatoes, while Becky has the lower opportunity cost of a kilogram of potatoes. She gives up less tomatoes than Tom would to produce that kilogram. We call lower opportunity cost comparative advantage. So here's our formal definition. If Tom has a lower opportunity cost than Becky when producing one kilogram of tomatoes, then we say that Tom has a comparative advantage in tomato production. Similarly, Becky has a comparative advantage in potato production because she has the lower opportunity cost. Our claim is that there are gains from trade if each person specialises in production according to his or her comparative advantage. So Tom and Becky can gain through specialisation and trade. Even though Becky has an absolute advantage in everything, but she doesn't have a comparative advantage in everything. Tom has a comparative advantage in tomatoes. If he specialises in tomatoes, while Becky specialises in potatoes, they can then trade and both be better off. Let's see how. So let's say that Tom and Becky each have 48 hours to work in a week. In the absence of any specialisation and trade, they each spend half their time producing tomatoes and half their time producing potatoes. Let's see how much they produce. Remember that Tom takes four hours to produce a kilogram of potatoes. So if he spends half his 48 hours or 24 hours producing potatoes, he can produce 24 divided by 4, he can produce 6 kilograms of potatoes. And remember that it takes Tom 8 hours to produce a kilogram of tomatoes, 
So in half his work week or 24 hours, he can produce 24 divided by 8. He can produce 3 kilograms of tomatoes. What about for Becky? Well, remember that she can produce a kilogram of potatoes in two hours. So if she spends half her work week, 24 hours producing potatoes, then she can produce 12 kilograms of potatoes. And in the other half her work week, her other 24 hours, she will be producing tomatoes. It takes Becky six hours to produce one kilogram of tomatoes. So she will produce four kilograms of tomatoes as well as her 12 kilograms of potatoes during the week. Okay, so let's ask what Tom and Becky can produce in total when they don't specialise and trade. In the absence of specialisation and trade, Tom produces 6 kilograms of potatoes, Becky produces 12 kilograms of potatoes, so in total they produce 18 kilograms of potatoes. What about tomatoes? Well, Tom produces 3 kilograms, Becky produces 4 kilograms, so in total they produce 7 kilograms of tomatoes. But what happens if we have specialisation? Suppose that I'm a dictator and I can order Tom to spend all his time producing tomatoes. He's not allowed to produce any potatoes. And I order Becky to only spend six hours producing tomatoes and she has to spend the rest of her time, 42 hours, producing potatoes. What happens to production? Let's fill in our table again. Well, if Tom is spending all his time producing tomatoes, he clearly isn't going to be producing any potatoes. He's spending 48 hours a week producing tomatoes. It takes him 8 hours to produce 1 kilogram of tomatoes. So he will produce 48 divided by 8, or 6 kilograms of tomatoes per week. And what about Becky? Well, remember I've ordered Becky to spend 42 hours producing potatoes and it takes her two hours to produce one kilogram of potatoes. So Becky will produce 21 kilograms of potatoes in total. But also remember that she still has another six hours left to produce tomatoes and it takes her six hours exactly to produce one kilogram of tomatoes. So that is exactly what Becky will produce. Now Let's look at total production. Notice that we now have 21 kilograms of potatoes. Tom produces none, but Becky produces 21 kilogram. And that's more than we had when they each spent half of their time producing potatoes and tomatoes. Indeed, it's 3 kilograms more than we had in the absence of specialisation. But what about tomatoes? Well, while... Well, We've got three extra kilograms of potatoes. It doesn't seem to have cost us anything because in the absence of specialisation, there was seven kilograms of tomatoes. And with specialisation, there's still seven kilograms of tomatoes. So by the dictator ordering specialisation, Tom and Becky have increased their output of potatoes by three kilograms at no cost in terms of lost tomato production. So, where did the extra three kilogram of potatoes come from? What's happened here? Tom has a comparative advantage or a lower opportunity cost of producing tomatoes. So if he increases his tomato production, in fact if he spends all his time producing tomatoes, he effectively frees up Becky's time she no longer has to produce those tomatoes. But Becky has a comparative advantage in potato production. So with the time that she has freed up from producing tomatoes, she can produce not just the number of potatoes that Tom used to produce, but even more potatoes. She's able to produce three kilograms more potatoes than Tom and Becky together had before. Now, that means that Tom and Becky can share the extra three kilograms of potatoes. They might share them 50-50, one and a half kilograms each. However, they can both be better off by specialisation according to opportunity cost and then trade.